So if you were listening closely in the last video, I mentioned panning with the drum machine, but if you tried to do that, you probably noticed a problem. There's no way for us to go into this instrument and actually individually set the pan position of these various samples. There's an obvious fix to that, which is just add another instrument track, load up the drum machine, pick the kit that you want, you know, find the sample that perhaps you want to be panned over, and then you can pan it like so, and you could add that in. Uh, that's kind of a pain, but that is what you'd have to do if you want to work exclusively with the drum machine, which is totally cool. You don't need to use the SPC if you don't want to, but that's what we're going to be covering in this lesson. And we'll see with the SPC that we have the option of controlling the pan position on individual samples and actually a whole lot more than that. So let's open up the SPC here. And what we're going to do is pick a pack. If you've bought any packs, like I bought this modern hip hop one, it will show up at the bottom. But for this example, why don't we go in and maybe use the Funk Latin. So it's gonna load in the samples and you saw it do it very quickly. And now we have a series of pads. And so I think these pads give you a better idea of there being individual samplers within these drum machines. We can imagine that each pad is an individual sampler and we get some of those controls down here as well as a visual representation of our waveform. What the SPC also allows us to do is to go to a second bank of sounds. So with the drum machine, we were limited to what, like maybe seven, eight sounds. With the SPC, we have 16 sounds and just go through the various packs and find something that you like. So let's pick a sound here. Let's pick this tambourine, for example. And I'm gonna see if I can find it on the keyboard. There it is, okay. We have our gain control, which is exactly the same as the gain control in the drum machine. We have the pan position. And now we can do this to individual samples. So if I want to then put the bongo off to the left or off to the right, I can do that no problem. Very handy feature. And then the pitch is exactly the same to what we saw inside of the drum machine. So if I pitch it down, it's also going to lengthen the sample. If I pitch it up, it's going to shorten it. These controls are actually global controls, the punch, bite, and MSL. And to explain these, what I might do is go back into bank one and take a look at, uh, let's do it with the snare drum, why not? There it is. So what punch is going to do is it's going to add additional emphasis to the attack stage of this envelope. We'll be talking more about envelopes in a couple of videos. But I want you to think of the attack stage as being the beginning of the sample when it's loudest. If I increase the punch, it's going to emphasize that. So notice now how the second half of this sample is almost non-existent. It's cutting it off immediately, and all we're hearing is that initial click as compared to... It also adds a lot of gain, so don't let that confuse you. We'd have to turn this down to compensate. Byte is going to add distortion. And you can kind of set that to taste. And MSL is a limiter, essentially. I'm not sure what the MS stands for, but the L definitely stands for limiting. So if we go back to the tambourine sound, Listen to what happens to this tambourine. Listen to the tail end or the decay stage. Everything's pretty much one volume there. So we've covered the limiter before. We have a built-in limiter. These features, again, they're global. So if I crush the tambourine with the MSL, I'm doing this to all my samples. So consider using those with a little bit of moderation in mind. 
The last thing I want to cover is the actual sample window itself. And let's take a look at this crash. If I hover down inside of the sample browser, I can actually drag this out. And this is literally shaping the envelope. So as I mentioned with the attack before, if I want this to not come in so aggressively, I can lengthen the attack. And now the volume is going to ramp up gradually. Same thing with the decay. If I want to start where the sample actually begins, so I'm not actually increasing this ramp here, I just want the sample to start at the second half, I have to try to get this click just right, and I can now bring it in like so, and we can now hear that it's starting at those different stages in the envelope. Remember, trying to click and drag this can be a little bit difficult, so just be patient with it. And I can do the same thing with the end of the sample. If I just want to have this initial click, I can do that if I choose. All right, so that's helpful. And we can adjust the gain of the overall sample in here too. The last thing to look at is this cut and cut by. In a traditional drum sampler, you would see this as choke groups. And I need to just make sure I can find where the ride is. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go to cut here and I'm gonna select ride. And what happens is when I play this ride, listen to the length of it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play the ride and immediately I'm gonna follow it by the crash, okay? So what's happening here is once I hit that crash, I'm immediately shutting off the ride sound, okay? The ride symbol. So the ride symbol's going, crash. And I can also do the reverse of that here. If I want to go up and have this be cut by the ride, I can choose ride in the bottom. And now my crash is being cut off by the ride. So it's up to you where you want to do this. If you want it to go with cut or cut by, you can get the same effect in multiple uh, little sample browsers there. Okay, great. So what I'll do is I'll go in and start to program something. So let's just start by using this closed hat here. I could record in if I wanted to, but I think I'll just program because it's a little bit easier, at least for me. And let's get this the correct length. And we'll just change the color. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And remember, when we zoom in, we can change the actual grid resolution. So now we're working at, I think, 16th notes. So I'll just go ahead, double click in like so, and I'll actually do this in groups of three. That might be interesting. And I'll start with the first one being quiet, second one being somewhere in the middle. Let's make this quieter third one being relatively loud. So let me just check that to make sure it's working. Okay, great. Now I can do my little option click. So I have them all in like so, just playing on those 16th notes at those various velocity levels. And adjusting your velocity of drum hits is really important. It can make the whole drum kit sound a little bit more human. But if we want to take that humanization a step further, we can go into this quantize menu here and start to utilize these swing controls. So what the swing is going to do is it's going to take these notes and subtly pull them off the grid. It's going to add more of a groove and it's better to hear this than for me to just explain it. So let's listen to this once straight. And just so you can actually see this a little bit better, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab all of the MIDI notes here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna just pick from one of the ends and I'm just gonna decrease their length ever so slightly. And now what I can do is go in and I'm going to choose 16th notes because that's what we're playing, swing A. 
All right, you could see they moved ever so subtly, and now we can listen back. As compared to... Yeah, I like the swing a lot more. We have various sort of levels of intensity of swing. So if we want to go crazy, we can go up to swing F and you can see just how hard that moves those clips. It actually deletes some. Or for me, I like to kind of stick with swing A or swing B. Yeah, I definitely am digging that quite a bit. Let's go back into the SPC instrument and now maybe make a couple of adjustments. And let's not forget these are global, so I'm just gonna set this very casually here. Uh, I don't want anything too crazy, but you can push it to the extreme if you want. So at this point, I'll pause the video, I'll add in a couple more drum hits into that clip, and then we'll take a listen. I've gone ahead and finished this up. I kept this very simple, as you can tell. With one of these patterns, I went in and used the eighth note quantization, and then inside of the SPC itself, I just changed some things around slightly. So let's take a listen to this now. And feel free to go as crazy as you want with this. If you like some of the percussion sounds in one of the SPC packs, but prefer some percussion sounds from other, load in multiple instances of the SPC. There's no rule that says you can't do that. I think the last thing I might do is just add a touch of reverb to this entire drum kit, and I think we'll be good to go. So let's just check that out. Mm -hmm. 